In today's video, I want to talk to you about a subject that came to me via a comment in one of our videos recently, and it comes from Alex McGillivray, and it reads like this. I'd be interested in a video around how your experiences and perception of joy have changed over the years, i.e. how you felt in your 20s and 30s and what you wish you could have known back then. Well, my opinion and my feelings on that are probably the same as everybody else's, to be honest with you, because I don't think that my life is any different to yours. And so what I'm going to do is just go back in time and run through things and let's see if we can put this together and see how joy affects pretty much all of us, to be honest. Now, I've got some notes on this side of me. I will just look over every now and again, see, keep me on track because I am known to ramble as I'm doing now. So let's go back to childhood. When I was a child, the things that brought me joy were the minute I walked out of the door, there was excitement in the world because everything is new. I wanted to be a spaceman. I wanted to be a big lorry driver and drive trains, all these sorts of things I wanted to do. And so everything was an adventure. So there was lots of joy in my life. When I was playing, I had friends. It was, it was really good. You used to do all sorts of things. And I had things like Lego, which was huge at the time. A Johnny Seven one-man army was a gun that was as big as me. It fired grenades off the top and all sorts of things. And I loved it. Being a child was brilliant. As I grew into the teens... I had a chopper bike and I'd be off around and buying that. But the thing that changed was that I started to get into sport. And so I would be out playing football and I would play cricket in the summer. So those sorts of things, it was more that what I was doing than the toys that I used to play with that was bringing me more joy at the time. And so it was this sort of period of my life was really good. As I grew into my later teens, things slightly changed. We'd get our first jobs. I worked for my dad, but I also had a job in the winter when we weren't open with the art gates. So I was working by that stage. And the things that I liked to do at that kind of stage was going to football instead of playing it. My brother-in-law is about 12 years older than me, and he used to take me to football matches all around London and that. And so that was fun. I'd go into there. But the other thing I discovered around that age was girls. <laughs> and like all boys, I wanted to be out there proving myself. And I was useless for girls, <laughs> got to be honest. But that's besides the point. And the other thing was that by the time I was 18 and 19, the big thing in the UK was disco. And clubbing became a, became a thing. And we would be out all the time, and I loved disco music. And I'd be dancing in clubs and all that sort of stuff. Had a great time. So we were still, it wasn't as much fun as being a child because it wasn't as much of an adventure, but it was still great. But when you get into your 20s, things start to change. By the time I was 20, I'd left home. I had my own ride on fairgrounds, so I was developing a business. So I'd kind of gone through the age of fun and I was settling down, if you like. And the minute you do that, it's very much like others who are in their jobs are starting to build their careers. And so you're just feeling your way in and trying to better yourself. I got married in my 20s. I had my first son in my 20s. And so... Joy was slightly different. Joy was more family orientated and not so much going out and doing everything because I was work sort of took over for most of us. By the time my 30s came, my second son was born. And by that time, I'd moved from the business that I'd bought when I was 20 and I had another one at 30. And in my 30s, I lost that. And in losing that, I lost our house and pretty much everything we had. So my 30s were traumatic, to say the least. And in the first six or seven years of my 30s, there wasn't a lot of joy, to be honest with you. And it was all about keeping your head out of the water and scrambling to try and 
keep going. It was a tough time in my 30s. In the 40s, I'd kind of started to recover from losing everything. I'd gone and got a job because I needed to have a job to get some money to feed the children, all that sort of stuff, all the stuff that we all have. And so in, in the 40s, I kind of got some different types of joy. And that was, again, through the achievements I was having. By the time I was 40-odd, 40 40-odd, 40 I wasn't oh, early 40s, let's say that, I'd, I'd started taking my son to football in our local football club, which was a non-league team, not quite in the higher echelons of football, if you like. And I'd taken him to football. And I, because of that, I'd ended up joining the supporters club. Within 18 months, I was chairman of the supporters club. And not long after that, I was invited onto the board of directors. So I, I kind of, it was an achievement, one that I was proud proud of. And at the end of my 40s, I started a radio career. And so where I'd been in the depths in my 30s, in my 40s, it was kind of coming out of it. But by the, fi nine, by the time I was 50, my marriage had broken up. I had moved 200 miles away and I was starting a new life. My radio career was taking off. So there was a lot of joy from that, but that was balanced by the things that were happening personally that end. Also, during my 50s, I met Debs. Debs has been my biggest supporter through all lots of things. And so at that sort of stage, things had started to pick up again. Then I had the kidney problem, which meant I lost the kidney. It was I was ill, took a recovery time. And that one event in itself probably made the most difference to my life because it changed the importance of what made me happy. Where before I was, my biggest joy came from my achievements, what I was doing, how I was moving on. Afterwards, it made me realise, it flipped a switch, that made me realise that all those things were just stuff. The real things that brought me joy were the things that were important to me. And in the period that I thought I wasn't going to be around very long, the things that became really important to me were my family and the people I cared about. And from that day, everything really changed because the things that I thought were important weren't. And once I made that flip of the switch, I also realised that after beating myself up for years, that I was actually, I wasn't such a bad guy as I thought I was. And I started to feel happy in my own skin. And so from that moment, there was an upward curve because I was getting joy in my life from things that I hadn't thought about before. Things that I'd thought important for the last 20, 30 years suddenly weren't as important as I thought they'd been. And that was a huge, a huge change in. And from the minute I started to like myself, then things started to change again. So we come into my 60s. And what I've realized now is that the big things that I spent most of my life fighting for weren't important at all. They're good. They're nice to have the good things. But I get a lot of joy and a lot of great, I'm grateful for lots of things, small things. I've talked about them in other videos, little things that happen daily. Someone smiling as I'm walking down the street and just lifting me if I don't feel so good. And all those kinds of things. I've slowed down because I'm not chasing like I used to be, trying to move on a bit. And I've slowed down. I've got a slower pace of life. And that's that's kind of enjoyable as well. And I've got wiser over the years. If only I'd have known that as a child and as a teenager and all that. I thought old people were old. They were on their way out. But what I've realized is that now I have a wisdom that I never thought I would have. 
when I thought I was right at 14 and 20 and 25, I've realized that I was just learning and that now I'm in that position where I have a lifetime to look back on and can tell the difference between what was important and what wasn't. And so that has brought me another load of joy. And now it's all about experiences, things that happen to me during the course of a day that make me smile, that make me feel happy. And so joy has changed so much over the years, and yet I still feel it the same way as I felt it then, but just about different things. And I know who I am, and that's the most important thing. So when you think about it, I started up there as a child, and as I got older, it sort of started to come down. And then but through the middle years, if you like, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, I was building a career and trying to raise a family and all that sort of thing. And the joy dropped. But from uh, halfway through my 50s onwards, it started to come back up again. And so if I can tell you anything, and what I would tell my youngest self is that don't worry. The hard times are when we build our experience. We learn, we grow as a person. And so that joy now has come up here. And the reason I think it's the same for pretty much all of us is because there is a thing called the U curve of joy that says exactly that, that we have joy from an adventure when we're young and it comes around and it comes up again as you get older. And so if I could say something to you, it's this. Do not worry if you're in that cur in that bottom curve because things will get better. You will learn enough. You will grow. You will become a better person. You will feel better in your skin as time goes on. Being old is not the downer that I think it is. We thought it was going to be. For me, and I know for a lot of people that I know are saying exactly the same thing. So... It's all good. The best is yet to come. And that's what I'd like to say. Now, if you've got any comments to make about that, please write them down below. I've also pinned a comment. So I wanted to find out where you're all from. So if you could put your name and where you come from, that would be fantastic. And the other thing I'd like to do in that pinned comment is that I'm doing a live stream on Wednesday afternoon, if you'd like to join me. And that's in UK time, by the way. <laughs> So it'll be different wherever you live. But if you've got any questions you'd like to ask me that I can answer for you, I'd love to. And so if you want to put them there, that would be great too. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. You can subscribe if you want to. And if you feel that someone needs to hear this video, then you can share it with them too. And if you click over there, I'm going to tell you, how you can break out of your comfort zone to help you on that curve upwards again. I'll see you next time.